What's up, all you Quantum Maniacs? I'm Daquan Young, and today we present 20 of the most controversial and banned Super Bowl commercials the NFL doesn't want you to see. Don't forget to subscribe to TPS and make sure you hit the bell and turn on our notifications and join the notification squad. So for many football and non-football fans alike, the best part of the Super Bowl is the commercial. And that's because these ads, which companies spend millions on every year, are never lacking in entertainment and humor. But sometimes, these ads go a little too far, especially when they're controversial and feature sensitive subjects. Number 20, the Bud Light Swear Jar. Bud Light sure knows how to produce some high quality Super Bowl commercials, but this one didn't make the final cut. CBS refused to air this ad, which featured a swear jar segment in an office, where workers would throw in money anytime they swore. What's that? That's a swear jar. Every time someone swears, you put a quarter in it. Who gets the money? I don't know, we'll use it to buy something for the office, like a case of Bud Light or something. Fucking awesome. Funny part is, this ad actually won an Emmy for best commercial. Number 19, Ashley Madison, have an affair. Ashley Madison is a Canadian online dating service, and they went all in trying to get on television for Super Bowl 43. Too bad NBC rejected this one. This ad features a woman in an office writing on the board that her husband is a cheater. The commercial closes out with the controversial lines, Life is short, have an affair. Number 18, Soda Stream, a tax on Pepsi and Coca-Cola. Soda Stream pierced together a commercial that featured one Pepsi and one Coca-Cola delivery worker trying to race and dropping their products off at a supermarket. However, both men have accidents and spill bottles all over the place. With SodaStream, we could have saved 500 million bottles on game day alone. CBS refused to air the ad, believing it wasn't kind to take shots at a pair of rival drink companies like that. Instead, an older SodaStream ad was aired over this Pepsi and Coke commercial. Number 17, Charlotte McKinney and Carl's Jr. Instagram model Charlotte McKinney starred in a Carl's Jr. commercial for Super Bowl 49. In the ad, McKinney is walking around seemingly naked, catching the attention of the bystanders. And at the end, McKinney eats a Carl's Jr. burger while dining a bikini. I love going all natural. It just makes me feel better. Nothing between me and my 100% all-natural, juicy, grass-fed beef. Introducing the all-natural burger, the first ever in fast food, with no antibiotics, no added hormones, and no steroids. Only at Carl's Jr. This ad was widely criticized for being sexist and offensive. In an interview, McKinney later admitted that she was trying to distance herself from the ad but that she also signed up for another Carl's Jr. commercial. Number 16, Tim Tebow, Focus on the Family Pro-Life. The Focus on the Family organization ran a commercial that starred former Heisman Trophy winner and future NFL quarterback Tim Tebow. His mother, Pam, talked about how Tim was a miracle baby and emphasized how families need to be tough. Tebow then ran over and tackled his mother. I call him my miracle baby. He almost didn't make it into this world. I can remember so many times when I almost lost him. It was so hard. Well, he's all grown up now, and I still worry about his health. You know, with all our family's been through, we have to be tough. CBS came under fire for running the ad, which talked about abortion. After all, the network had previously refused to put on ads that included divisive subjects like this. Nonetheless, CBS stood by their decision to run it. Number 15, Scarlett Johansson stars in SodaStream. For Super Bowl 48, SodaStream gave it another go round with their advertising, and this one finally made it to TV. In the commercial, Scarlett Johansson drinks the product and says, sorry, Coke and Pepsi. Like most actors, my real job is saving the world. Start with plain water, add bubbles, mix in the perfect flavor, 
look, a soda that's better for you and all of us. Less sugar, less bottles. If only I could make this message go viral. You doing it, Scarlett. Yeah, you doing it. Changing the world one sip at a time. Sorry, Coke and Pepsi. Oh, yeah, she done it. So the stream. And that too raised controversy, giving another apparent attack on the rival drink company. SodaStream executive Daniel Birnbaum did an interview with The Independent and apologized for the ad, calling it a mistake and saying they were sorry for spending millions on the commercial. Number 14, Rolling Rock Ricochet. Rolling Rock beer got a little too carried away for this advertisement they tried running for Super Bowl 41. It starts with a game of baseball where the batter hits the ball, which proceeds to hit the pitcher in the guy's area. The ball then keeps bouncing around and hits different men in the guy's area. Runner at first and nobody out. Henderson, the batter. Harmon on the mound. The left-hander comes set. The pitch on the way. Henderson swings and lines one foul. Ricochets back and against Harmon. What's going on? Everybody's going down. Now the fans. I've never seen anything like this. There goes my popcorn. Strike me. No! In the boot. Not Phil. Look out. The catcher still can't find the ball. Oh! Yes. Obviously, not the most appropriate thing to put on television. Number 13, Chrysler, Halftime in America. This ad by Chrysler was narrated by Hollywood icon Clint Eastwood. In the commercial, he narrates some of the problems the automobile industry has endured in the United States. He also talks about how the city of Detroit is going to rebound and how the country's second half is just beginning. They almost lost everything. But we all pulled together. Now Motor City is fighting again. I've seen a lot of tough eras, a lot of downturns in my life, times when we didn't understand each other. It seems that we've lost our heart at times. The fog of division, discord, and blame made it hard to see what lies ahead. But after those trials, we all rallied around what was right and acted as one. This commercial received a lot of heat, as some critics believe that the commercial was a way of endorsing Barack Obama, with the 2012 election coming up later in the year. Clint Eastwood would go on to endorse Mitt Romney for the election, so that may have put some of the controversy for this ad to rest. Number 12, Powerade Zero versus Gatorade. For Super Bowl 43, Powerade Zero tried to display its superiority over Gatorade. This commercial featured two women wearing bikinis chugging down their drinks with an elderly man watching in the background. This commercial never made it to television. Number 11, fantasy video greetings falls flat. This commercial didn't have a whole lot of creativity and it's easy to see why many would be offended by it. I'm here all day by myself as an outbreak of lice at the school and the one day that you're home and the kids all the time are like, mom, you know, you can't even be bothered to help. If you would just, just can't wait for your friends to come over and mess up my house, you lost all your money because you always pick the team that loses. Football, it's such a family activity. I just, And yes, this fantasy video greetings commercial was banned. Number 10, Groupon ad with Elizabeth Hurley. You know a Super Bowl ad is controversial when the founder of the company decides he has to take it down. Such was the case with Andrew Mason, the man who founded Groupon. This one, featuring actress Elizabeth Hurley, offended many with its reference to deforestation. The Brazilian rainforest, one of nature's most lush ecosystems. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Hurley. The rainforest is irreplaceable, yet rampant deforestation is threatening this natural treasure. 
But not all deforestation is bad. And since 100 of us bought at Groupon.com, we're all saving 50% on a Brazilian wax at Completely Bear in New York City. Save the money. Unlock great deals in your town. Groupon.com. Mason said, we hate that we offended people and offered an apology before Groupon took down the commercial. Number nine, Hobby Lobby. Take that. This Hobby Lobby commercial featured women referencing the Supreme Court's decision, which said the corporation doesn't have to cover birth control. The corporation has spoken against the Affordable Care Act, and the court said because of religious exemption, Hobby Lobby doesn't have to cover it. So they had some fun on the commercial with the message, take that separation of church and state. Number eight, Sales Genie Pandas. For Super Bowl 42, Sales Genie ran an animated commercial featuring pandas with Chinese accents. Needless to say, it didn't sit well with viewers. Ting Ting, we have no customers, no sales. We're going out of business. Ling Ling, I am not going back to the zoo. Then we need a sales miracle. Panda Psychic, help, we need customers. Tell Ling Ling to get 100 free sales leads at salesgenie.com and stop eating the bamboo furniture. Wow, look at all these sales leads. Thank you, Sales Genie. Hey, kids, you want to go see the grizzly bears at the zoo? For 100 free sales leads, go to salesgenie.com. Sales Genie was accused of using Asian stereotypes and using cheap Chinese accents for humorous purposes. The Sales Genie CEO opted to pull the ad after receiving so much backlash for it. Number seven, Bud Light Apology Bot 3000. The beer company has ran a series of Apology Bot 3000 ads over the years, where a robot apologizes to somebody on a person's behalf. This one, featuring a chef who accidentally fed a customer poisonous food, never made it to the Super Bowl screen. How do I apologize for this? Oh, apology about 3,000. Oh. <laughs> this is an apology from... Kenji and the mic in the kitchen. That blowfish you just ate was lethally poisonous. Sorry we didn't catch that sooner. What? But hey, Bud Light? Nice. See? It's all good. Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. Quick, give him the check. Number six, Daniel Defense Pro Gun Ad. The NFL refused to air an advertisement for Super Bowl 48, one where a Marine veteran explains his need for a gun in order to protect his family. The commercial was obviously controversial, at least to the NFL. The league banned it and refused to air this Daniel Defense commercial for the Super Bowl. <laughs> Daniel Defense, defending your nation, defending your home. The creators of the ad defended it and said they tried meeting with the NFL's guidelines while putting it together. Their efforts didn't work. Number five, Ram trucks built to serve. Fiat Chrysler advertised its Ram truck products in quite controversial fashion for Super Bowl 52. The commercial played portions of a speech from Martin Luther King, where he emphasizes the need for others to serve one another. As King's speech played, the commercial showed different ways of serving others. If you want to be important, wonderful. If you want to be recognized, wonderful. If you want to be great, wonderful. But recognize that he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. That's a new definition of greatness. By giving that definition of greatness, it means that everybody can be great. You don't have to know about Plato and Aristotle to serve. You don't have to know the theory of relativity to serve. You don't have to know the second theory of thermodynamics in physics to serve. You only need a heart full of grace. Soul generated by love. 
But this commercial drew a lot of criticism because some thought it wasn't right to use Martin Luther King's words for a Ram truck ad. So, yeah, they might have gone a bit too far here. It was probably the serving thing, too. You know, slavery. Number four, 84 Lumbers, The Journey. For Super Bowl 52, the 84 Lumber Supplies Company put up an ad that showed a Mexican mother and her daughter trying to cross the border to the United States, only to discover a wall that would keep them out. Obviously, this was a reference to the campaign of President Donald Trump, who's been pushing for a wall to be built along the U.S.-Mexican border. Fox refused this one, but 84 Lumber put the commercial up on their website and went viral immediately. Number three, Durex Protection Act. It starts with a 73-year-old man robbing a bank and shooting his gun in the air. Then he has flashbacks about his life, which depict his troublemaking ways. It ends with the parents making love, with Durex reminding people to use protection. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> the creepy tone, violence, and horror in the commercial bother quite a few people. It's, it sounds disturbing. And here's the punchline. The commercial was banned. Number two, General Motors, robot suicide. In 2007, General Motors ran an ad that featured a factory robot committing suicide by jumping off a bridge after it made one tiny error. <laughs> Obviously, this rather heartless advertisement received plenty of heat. In fact, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention spoke with General Motors and convinced them to edit out the suicide portion of the commercial. According to CNN, that commercial cost GM $5 million. And it's safe to say it probably wasn't the best way to spend all that dough. Number one, Nationwide Insurance, child death. In 2015, Nationwide Insurance ran a very sad, yet somewhat powerful commercial. This ad depicted a young boy learning that he wasn't able to grow up because he had already died from an accident. The commercial then shows a series of accidents that could be dangerous to kids, including drowning, eating poisonous products, and having a TV fall over. Hey, wait! Wes, wait! Wait! I'll never learn to ride a bike. Or get coolies. to fly or travel the world with my best friend and I won't ever get married. I couldn't grow up because I died from an accident. At Nationwide, we believe in protecting what matters most, your kids. Together, we can make safe happen. Needless to say, this commercial was quite controversial and led to a ton of backlash. It sounds rather disturbing. 
What other banned and controversial Super Bowl ads should we have included on our list? Join us in the comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps us out a ton and we truly appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. On my knee.